This is Twit. What about this rumor that Apple is making thousands of semi-transparent uh, lenses at Foxconn? This comes from the, uh, the information. Um, Apple reaches new stage in development of AR devices. They're working with Taiwan's Foxconn technology. And they are in a pre-production pre mode, I guess. Uh, the information says, uh, of course, Apple refused to comment, but the uh, information says their sources say the lenses are at least one to two years away from mass production, as is in all likelihood the AR product. But you've got to ramp up production. You've got to make tests. You've got to get them to developers. And that's what they're apparently doing right now. Depends on how many thousands, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not millions. It's not. I don't. That's a, it, it's it's definitely a test run. It could mean they're making enough to test in house. It could mean they're making enough that they could send some to a few close friends. It could mean they're just literally just testing the manufacturing process, yeah. and that none of these are intended to be really tested by anybody. So, according to a person familiar with the matter, <laughs> the lenses uh, had passed the prototype stage two months ago. And they've entered trial production, which would be how you would uh, improve the process, make sure you can do them reliably and great, as you say, in great quantities. Perhaps make sample units to send to uh, executives or developers. Uh, you know, we just keep hearing this drumbeat that Apple's going to do this, <clears throat> and they're going to do it in the next couple of years. Um, mm. I'd be interesting. If, if they're saying if they're saying it's semi-transparent, that does suggests that they're using some sort of a side projection uh, where you have we have uh, essentially be beams are going from left and right and it shoots into the glass and then uh, and then is diverted 90 degrees into the into the eyes uh, I've always been my big mystery with this project has always been are they intending to do an Apple watch in the eyeglasses? sort of thing where here is a notification or here is something actionable or here's a way to interact with Siri or are they intending to do something that is closer to uh, augmented reality and if it's the latter it would be quite a thing if they were able to put that into a pair of uh, glasses that don't make you look like at best Charles Nelson Riley <laughs> and at worst like uh, you know I don't mind like looking Jordy like Brown. Charles Nelson Riley Jordy was, I don't was, know it's quite cool yeah the lens is this is the information by the way the, the uh, they're in what's called EVT, or the Engineering Validation Test. That's when they start making a lot of them. Uh, the design is locked down, and they're now testing its suitability for mass production. The lenses use a polarized system similar to the technology in 3D movie glasses. Now, there's active and passive polarization, so they don't describe yeah. which. Uh, but that's what gives you stereoscopic you know, 3D imagery. Um, the AR lenses are tough to make, according to the source because they're composed of multiple extremely thin layers of different synthetic materials, <clears throat> each of which is susceptible to bubbles, scratches, and other marks. They must yeah. be manufactured in clean rooms. And the person said, and this this might confirm what you're thinking, Andy, the lenses are slightly larger than those found in eyeglasses, typically. Slightly yeah. larger. It's, yeah. there, there, there's so many problems. And, and, and again, you, you put a scratch in one of these things, it's remember how mad that Steve Jobs got when he was carrying around the first iPhone with a plastic screen and said, "Fix this." Yeah, that could, that could be a deal breaker. Well, you could seal it with a glass lens. So I think now we have to have one <laughs> put a screen cover on it. <laughs> yeah, put something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I How does feel that work with your mask. Uh, your your mask. My thing my uh, my uh, I was Snapchat just spectacles. Why Casey Neistat was hosting Twit. Yeah. No. No. Actually, I think it's the, I I need a bowler. I think it's the Roger Stone look is what I'm going for here. Uh, oh, the no. <laughs> Leon Redbone. Go Leon Redbone. If you could be anybody, could be Leon Redbone. The Riddler. Uh, yeah, bigger lenses. I don't think bigger is bad. Bigger is more stylish. And it's interesting they're well, making yeah. bigger lenses because that's a bigger field of view as well. Mm. Can they be heart shaped? <laughs> I yeah. like that. 
It's a, it's ex, it's exciting because the, the thing is, you can either have you can either have uh, glasses that don't do a whole lot, but they are wearable and they last a good amount of time, or you can have something like Magic Leap where they're awesome and they do incredible things, but you need to have something on your belt. You need to have a, a, a device that's a lot more nimble than even an iPhone, I think, in order to in, in order to keep it working. It's it's an, it's interesting to th I, I think that any whatever Apple does, it's going to be a lot like the original iPhone, where we've seen touchscreen devices before, we have heard of multi-touch before, but we haven't seen them put together very very effectively until the iPhone came out. I think that we're going to see a lot of random technologies that we've heard of and a lot of almost their products that we've seen, uh, and it will come together into an actual productive product. But if they if they decide to ship it, which is still very well, much an they Apple's not going to ship something that that they feel is like ham fisted just to get it out there, right? I mean, it, of course. So, yeah. So it's yeah. I think you're right. It. I see it more along the lines of what we experienced with the first Apple Watch, not necessarily the first iPhone. Although, you you may be right about that. That you know, it's like, oh, I never thought about putting these things together this way. That I mean, that's Apple's stock and trade, right? Is is taking a look at products that are out there and saying. Uh, we have a better way of doing this, and here's what it looks yeah. like. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, the the, I mean, the iPhone has enough power, I think, to to power those kind of features in its own display. The question is, could it maintain? If if you're doing it via Bluetooth, if you're doing it even via direct Wi-Fi, could they maintain that link with uh, little enough latency and with enough uh, reliability that you wouldn't suddenly be? Oh, wait, 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 where 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 did the little flat supposed to be generated? Yeah, you, you can't yeah. have you can't have things saying Bluetooth when when Bluetooth audio fades out for half a second, it's or, or a fraction of a second, it's not a big deal. But when you're counting on like looking at a certain piece of information and suddenly it disappears and you see a spinning whatever for a half a second, then comes back, that's the why did I spend eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, even three hundred dollars for this thing? Well, that's why I think the watch is a good analog here because the the watch it basically connects not basically it connects exactly those ways, right? It's either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, direct Wi-Fi to your phone, and and it it um, you know if it loses that connection, the watch still is doing enough on its own so that when you're looking at it, you aren't really aware that it's lost. There's some times where it's like, oh, wait a minute, like something's wrong here. But otherwise, the watch is a pretty fluid, seamless experience, even though it's relying on you know, Bluetooth, which is so unreliable. It's ridiculous, but <laughs> uh, but it sure is low power and that's good. So, yeah. <laughs>